We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering. These are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. So deep, right? It's from Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams. So awesome. What a shame, man. He's a real poet. Real poet playing a poet. This is my poetry. This is my joystick. <laughs> so today I'm going to take a deep dive. Right? I'm a poet. I'm not here to, to make friends. I'm, I'm grateful that for whatever reason this people are interested in, in, in the work I'm doing and I'm grateful for that. But this is real. This is very real for me. This is something that is not just a, it's not just a gig. It's not just an act. I, I'm after the truth, you know. I'm not going to stop. So, I want to explain today rabbit holes. Wait for the muse to kick in. M U S E. Well, thank you for dealing with my shortcomings through all this. So, rabbit holes. What are these rabbit holes? Right? There's a, I don't know. <clears throat> it's an internet word, I think. I think most people, it actually comes from the story of Alice in Wonderland. Remember Alice in Wonderland when she went, when she followed the rabbit, literally, and she went down the hole? I had to find out. She was trying to find out something. I don't remember exactly what the story was about. <laughs> you remember when she goes that that scene? It's been a hundred a hundred years. That scene has been played out where Alice chases the rabbit down the hole and if, and she finds nothing. Right? There's nothing there. It's just a. It's it's what it, there's something there, but what she thought it was is something totally different. It's just a dark, ugly place. And the world continues to go on without you while you're down that hole biggest one right now is QAnon right. and what is QAnon QAnon Q ah, so powerful just a saying it's like Q ah, it's like a religion right it's like Jesus it's like Buddha ah, ha, ha. Mohammed Q powerful right it's a powerful fucking movement. Excuse me. Try not to curse today. It's a powerful, powerful effing movement today. Q. So what is Q? Q. What's the theory on Q? Q is a is a person who is to the right of the president. Some people argue that he could actually be the president himself. He could be a a group tank, a group think put out by Jared Kushner and the rest of those guys that are media guys that could clearly pull it off, no doubt about it. But the fact is, Q has been wrong in his predictions over and over again. Right? Trust Sessions, Hillary's going to get locked up. Mueller, the funniest one is Mueller. Mueller is, is, is actually working with Trump to... <laughs> Mueller is working with Trump. While Mueller attacks Trump, he's actually favoring Trump because he's using it to expose Hillary. Right? So is Q... Is Q sitting to the right? And then when we have evidence, AON Network, whoever they are, right? There's plenty of people out there that are exposing it for what it is, that Q is actually a group of kids or people or very, you know, poets writing some stuff, 
with prophecy in it, political prophecy, and, 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 and presenting it as if it's the president's you know, own voice. But at the same time, Trump is tweeting out his own voice. But Q is far more interesting because, because, I don't know why, but what really is Q? And here's the sad part. What really is Q? I'll tell you what Q is. See, Q was born out of Trump, Trump voter discontent. And look at the people who, who, who championed Q. Jerome Corsi, Lionel Nation, Alex Jones, Tracy Beams, young Jordan Sather. Destroy that illusion. I'm a fan of all these guys, all these people, all of them. That's not why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm just, I'm just pointing something out to you that you may not have realized on your own. <laughs> it may take some long-haired guy walking around in a park talking to himself to explain it to you. But Q is a response to Trump discontent because people thought that Trump was the man. Trump was going to fix it all. He was for the people. He's going to make America great again. He's going to build a wall. He's going to keep out the Mexicans because they're taking our jobs and selling drugs into our communities and raping our women. Trump, he's, he's going he's gonna to give everybody tax breaks so we have more money. Right? right? He's going to help the white people because the blacks got all the advantage. Right? All this stuff that Trump is going to do, right? Trump's going to fix all our problems. Look, he's smart. He's a businessman. He's, a, he's, a, he's an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Right? Who would you rather have, a socialist or an entrepreneur? Remember when he said that? He's going to lock Hillary up. Oh, everybody wants to see that, right? That was a great one. Trump is going to lock Hillary up. Because the big problem is Hillary. Right? He's going to lock her up. But really what, what Q is, is the realization that Trump is not who he says he is. That Trump is actually an actor and a a, uh, a very, very, very astute politician who said what he had to say to be elected. And now that he is elected, 80% of what he talked about is fiction. And to compensate for that, a, a movement like Q evolves where smart people, the people that I just mentioned, Jerome Corsi and the Lionel Nation, embrace the idea that it's all just a, it's all just 4D chess. That Trump is just playing us right now because he has to. Right? He has to. Because if he were to expose his hand now, right? If he would expose his hand, he would have exposed his hand. And the change, the, the, the groundbreaking, you know, epis, e e you know, efforts, that, you know, things that are supposed to happen are not going to happen because, because Trump gave it all away. That's the thinking. That's the logic behind it. So we wait for the next Q drop. Ah, Sessions. Trust Sessions. You remember all that shit? I don't follow it closely, but I, I follow it enough to know it's crap. Or it's poetry. It's one man's poetry. Right? So it's a way to... It's a way for the Trump people to accept their loss, accept their, their hardship, to lick their wounds and say, no, 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 we weren't wrong. We still believe in Trump. It's like a religion. It, it then moves into religion where even when the facts are right before you, the religion continues. 
even when there's there's massive evidence to debunk it it doesn't matter because you have to have faith in the leader in the guru in the religious icon that is Trump that he is for the people no 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 that's what Q is Q is a remedy for Trump discontent and why does why why has not why hasn't the you know the other side of that coin right the people who supported an independent Sanders who wanted to see uh, corporate oligar oligarchy disassembled that believed that that was the problem right it's the opposite of what Trump was telling you which Trump was saying that everything is good business is good America that's not the problem the problem is a swamp it's it's corruption within the within the the, the ranks which is true but the fuel behind that fire is the oligarchy a 1% minority that control virtually everything every aspect of our life including the media and this guy evolved out of 2016 and I'm not defending Sanders at all I think Sanders is in the final analysis he he, he wasn't he, he wasn't a true leader but he, he certainly inspired us in a poetic way because you can go back 25 30 years on YouTube and look at what Sanders was saying and it's exactly right about oligarchy there's no there's no dev there's nothing he talked about military spending being inflated when we have no enemy he, he talked about the military industrial complex the need for universal health care right he talked about all those things and all the while the people who believed in the old-fashioned version of capitalism we're capitalists remember when Nancy Pelosi says it we're capitalists when the when the when the when the Millennials came up and said that we're cut out of the equation you remember you remember when, he, when they when they did that in 2016 they were pushed out of the DNC made to feel like 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 they had won the election and then it was stolen from them remember that remember when that happened but but all the while the Trump team the Trump supporters were, were were sleeping through that they didn't see the mass corruption that we were exposing the Hillary Clinton camp with the Podesta emails and the 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 quid pro quo through the Clinton Foundation that we had already known these things leading into the election right and Trump was just touching on the very very perimeter of that that corruption So that's what Q is. Q is the is the is the is the magnificent rabbit hole of our time. That the people who supported Trump find solace in Q. Smart people. And then when they find out that they've been taken and had and played, they're devastated. Broken. Oh, how could I have fallen for that bullshit? And what about Russiagate? What about Russiagate? That's the mainstream media, the large form independent media, RT, Young Turks, Russiagate. Now Russia, the Russia story, for those of us who were paying attention, was, was an invention of John Podesta, Robbie Mook, Hillary Clinton camp to divert attention away from the fact that the Clinton team stole an election from the favorite Bernie Sanders. They did everything they could to make it to make him go away, crush him. And there lie the, the they had plants inside of the FBI, Comey, McCabe, Mueller, Strokes, Page, all these people were, were plants inside of the FBI that worked directly with Russian oligarchs 
Russian corruption. And the idea was to tag... Actually, it was to tag Sanders as a Russian agent. And they will do that come 2020 because Russia means socialism, means Bernie Sanders. None of these things have anything in common. They're just, they're just word games, right? But Russia Gate was a farce created by the Clinton Foundation to compensate for the fact that they stole an election and got caught. And rather than admit defeat, which they never do, or admit a wrong, which ideolog ideologically they can't because, they, because they're in bed with the, the donors, won't allow it. Right? Stick to the story no matter what. Right? And Russiagate was born, and who, who are the champions of Russiagate? Who are the, the opportunists in Russiagate? Right now, you know, H.A. Goodman, there's, you know, Young Turks, R.T. You know, that will run this story round the clock about Russiagate. Well, even, you know, my friend Jason Goodman, the Goodmans, Coast to Coast Goodmans. H.A. Goodman, ja H.A. <laughs> Goodman, J Jason Goodman, George Webb. Ah, George Webb, the mag the mastermind, George Webb. The Oracle. Spoos out ten pieces of shit. And then when a half a piece of shit sticks, he backpells says, See, I saw I told you so. <laughs> I mean at least Q has a higher percent a, a higher hit rate in terms of prophecy, right? At least Q's right half the time. At least they're paying attention. Right? So there's this whole world around Russiagate. Repeating the same stories. Comey, the McCabe, Clint Hillary, they're going to lock her up. Orange, orange, you know, jumpsuit. They're coming together. Right after this happens and right after that happens. Right after the midterms, they're going to lock everybody up. Right after Trump gets reelected again, they're going to lock everybody up. It's always coming. Notice it's always coming. It never happens, but it's coming. Russia gay. Russia did it. Russia did everything. Putin, they hacked the election. When the evidence is right in front of your face. That we that we told you two years ago that it was that it was a dump, it was an inside job, that crowd crowd strike was working with the DNC to make the problem go away. They invented Guccifer. We told you all these things two years ago. Right? But you see how powerful the mainstream media is in gaslighting people. That they believed in that Russia story. And they believe that they can, can, they can, can flip the narrative to Russia. And did they do it? You're damn right they did it. They got everybody from, from head to toe talking about a fucking stupid Russia story. Right? They did it. They gaslighted us. Badly. And that's Russiagate. That's a rabbit hole. Because if you keep wanting to see people locked up, if you keep wanting to see Comey and McCabe and, and, and Stokes and, and, and an arsenal of politically corrupt people, politicians, go down, you're in the rabbit hole. You'll wait because politicians don't lock each other up. They're not going to lock, because if I lock up you, then someone else is going to lock up me. That's the idea behind Russiagate, because they had to put dirt on Trump, because if Trump would, would have stayed true, if he really meant locking up Hillary, then what would have happened is they would have, had a, they would have found a lot more people to lock up, right? Everybody was going to go down. So get dirt on Trump, lock, you know, link him to Russia and the election, and the, 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 the shit economy, and everything is Trump's fault, right? That's the Democratic's, Democratic Party's solution, right? So there lies the rabbit hole, waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to tell you what the solution is, because I say it every, every video anyway, but I'll say it again at the end. And what is the, what is the other rabbit hole? That's two already. Q is the big one. And then there's Hillary Russiagate. It's the one I just described. And then there's party reform. 
Ah, we're going to reform the Democratic Party. <laughs> All right. We're going to re reform the Democratic Party. Who are the champions of that one? That's the Justice Democrats. That's Mr. Secular Talk. My, bo my friend in, in New York. I never even met the guy. Right? That's, to some degree, Tim Black, who I love. And, and Jamal Thomas, who I also love. But still, in, in their eyes, they still believe. They, they champion, they'll talk about Cynthia Nixon as if it's a champion. Ah, rising star. Ocasio-Cortez, rising star. Right? But then there's Jimmy Dore, who, 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 who was that, of that camp, and now is... He, Jimmy Dore is, is a cut above, really. I love Jimmy Dore. Not just because I want to be on his show, but... I love Jimmy Dore because he, he had the experience of being with the Young Turks and, and watching the sellout occur, where Cenk Uger takes money, f you know, to pr takes $20 million, and suddenly he's a Democratic tool. And, J and Jimmy Dore took off and did his own thing and constantly calls it out. Putin had nothing to do with it. So, so Jimmy Dore kind of stands in, in opposition of the party reform. But those party reform people, Justice Democrats, ah, our revolution, ah, we're going to fucking change the Democratic Party. <laughs> the people who just did all this damage and continue to do all this damage and continue to take the, the take the donor money and and totally turn their back on 95% of the population right they you're going to change them into your liberal view i mean that's the most profound one of all because anybody who has spent 5 seconds on wall street knows that people like Goldman Sachs and, and all these all these hardball players don't even they, they, they laugh at it when you say it. Forget about change. They laugh they, they sit in boardrooms laughing their asses off at how stupid and how naive you people are to think that they're that that's gonna change them. Like they actually care what you think. <laughs> oh we proved the oh see now it's out there that Goldman Sachs is corrupt and Hillary Clinton's corrupt and and, and Comey and the FBI, they, we, they own, we own the FBI too. And now everything's going to change, right? They laugh at that because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any effect. I'm in a gazebo. <laughs> gazebo. Right? But, but we're going to change that party. That's, that's the, the reform, the party rabbit hole. And every time they get another knife stuck in their back, like with Cynthia Nixon or, or Ocasio Cortez, they, they get it, they, the Democrats throw them a little bone and they say, oh, see, we want, we're winning, we're going, we're going to overthrow 26 out of 27 incumbents are reseated. But that one flyer, that one Ocasio Cortez, that one outside card, and they, they, oh, they embrace that hope. That rabbit hole, and they're listening to a, a 20 or 28 year old girl from the Bronx who claims she's from the Bronx and isn't from the Bronx, and she's pretty to look at, and and it and has it has no, it's a, just an empty, empty pretty face, and that's who's going to save the day. That's who's going to save the day. It's political reform party. Rabbit hole. That's the rabbit hole of the. Of the, we're going to reform the party. So what is the solution? That's my notes. Now what is the solution? I have to repeat the numbers again. One in seven people on food stamps. 80% of the country living paycheck to paycheck. 65% of the country doesn't have $400 to their name. If something goes wrong, they can't fix it. If it costs more than $400, sorry. Drive with a flat. <laughs> right. Elections are rigged. Without voter integrity, without... See, see the thing about it is, and, and mainstream media is proving our case, is that 90% of the people don't believe what mainstream media is telling them. But it's a form of gaslighting that over time, 
people will start to believe pieces of it, like the Russia story, where none of it was believable, and then slowly pieces of it, because of the repetition, becomes believable. But the point is that the point, the case that mainstream media currently makes is that a good 90% of the people don't believe what they're saying. A good 90% of the populace does not believe the House and the Senate, the, re the representatives who we elect, right, to represent us. We don't, they don't believe what they're saying anymore, right? But the answer is in the elections, right? The answer is, is without voter integrity, having the 90% the voice of the people heard. See, we all want a, a health care system that works. And we could argue the details of it. And I can assure you that single-payer Medicare for all is the way to go because it cuts all kinds of middlemen out of the equation. Right? Well-researched, well well documented and and decreasing the military spending by 80 percent against an enemy we don't have and raising the corporate tax rate to the point where they then respond to the people term limits right take bribery away out of politics the money the money flowing in and once you once you do those things you then have an integral an integral system but if, if we're allowed to, if elections are allowed to be stolen from us and, and the vote is suppressed and marginalized and, and uh, <laughs> what's that word, gerrymandering? Gerrymandered. And that you can vote the velvet rope. In, New York is a great example of the velvet rope. Where you can't vote in our election. No, no, no. You had to be online six months ago. Yeah, you, you can't. No, no, no. You sorry. Why? Who are you? Independent? Fuck you. Get out of here. Right. So, free and fair elections, but but the rabbit hole is so comfortable and so. No, no, no. We're not wrong. See, it's when we're wrong promptly admit it. And Lord knows I've been wrong many times. And I I read your comments and <laughs> and and to some degree it helps me it helps me stay on course, somewhat. But I'll always. I'll always, I'll always speak my mind anyway, you know. But the rabbit holes of of Q and and party reform and Russia Hillary Gate are not going to go away unless we unless we come together. I, you're not my enemy because you think of yourself as conservative, Republican, or loony left pussy hat liberal right you're not my enemy you're my friend I'm I'm I would like to I would like to be your friend right I would like to be your friend but while when you're down that rabbit hole by yourself and with other people you're missing the greater point which is despicable income and wealth inequality in this country that a ruling class has us all in the fucking rabbit hole. We're all down that dark and dirty rabbit hole. We're all in the in, in our mother's basement. Some of us literally. That was my rant today. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist, a reporter, mindstream YouTuber here on YouTube. For me to continue to do this kindly contribute I know a lot of you have already but buy a sticker you know buy some stickers on eBay Be become a patreon member throw three dollars my way it's like money in the you know it's like when I used to play on the subway you put your hat out and people would give you a dollar uh, I believe in the same thing you know I, I'll, I don't want to ever be you know charged to, to hear what I have to say I don't believe in that but I do believe in like the Buddha said that you know, take what you need and leave the rest. I'm not looking to get rich. I, I, I'm looking to sustain this voice. And you can help me do that by throwing a few dollars my way through Patreon, through whatever other links I put down below as time goes on. And uh, keep this message going so that I can continue to keep my feelers in the ground for you. Uh, 
It's not about me. It's about it's about it's about us. It really is. It's about it's about us. So that's enough out of me. My name is Marcus Conti. Peace out.